Humanity sets the agenda. It is four minutes past 12. You are listening to the Mid-Morning Talk on Salaam Media. November is known as Movember, changing the face of men's health. And we always uh, focus on uh, women's health. And, um, you know, when this time of the year comes, Movember, it's the focus then shifts to men's health. And uh, not so long ago, we were talking about um, mental wellness and mental well-being when it comes to women. But... Uh, like I mentioned, we always tend to forget about the men and uh, their health. Uh, there are myths and misconceptions that men should be a certain way, that men should be emotionless, that men should, shouldn't should cry, men shouldn't do this and men shouldn't do that. And there is equally a lot of pressure on men like there is on women. It's just that men, they, they don't show it much, but... Alhamdulillah, we have a platform like this here where we can get talking, where we can open uh, the conversations and hopefully get the help that our brothers need. Uh, joining me right now from Islamic Care Line is a counselor, uh, or rather social worker, Shuhaida Adam, to discuss the introduction to Movember and men's health. Assalamu alaikum, Shuhaida. Shukran for joining me. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Always a pleasure to discuss pertinent topics with your listeners. Alhamdulillah. Now, uh, give us an introduction about Movember. Uh, I, I do understand that the South African uh, organization is uh, not operational anymore, uh, probably due to uh, the situation that COVID uh, brought about last year. But uh, uh, what is Movember all about? Okay, so I'd like to introduce. Movember, I believe it initially started focusing mostly on men's, um, uh, different types of cancers that impact on men. So it was things like your prostate cancer, um, uh, testicular cancer, so something very specific for men. And I think the entire movement grew to highlight all areas of men's health and men's wellness. So shifting just from physical health, and also highlighting the need for men to be aware of mental health, mental health disorders, um, what support structures are available for them, and highlighting the fact that it's so very much stigmatized in communities. Okay, so mm-hmm. Movember was being intended for um, men to come up, talk about it, break down some of the stereotypes relating to mental health, and also very importantly was to basically open and reach out our hands to men in crisis, men who are in need of help, and men who want to step up and then help other men. So it was very much a men, it was very much a movement driven by men. Um, I, I do, unfortunately, uh, many men had felt sidelined by a lot of the focus on women, um, Wrongly, I suppose, a lot of them felt victimized by the focus on women and, you know, things like CBB and women's wellness and women's empowerment. Um, some of them felt a bit victimized. And Movember also came about to also correct misconceptions around society's view on men. Um, so, it's, alhamdulillah, it has grown. It's made a great impact. Um, it was also meant to sort of uh, raise funds or research into men's issues, men's physical health, and men's other um, social issues. And I do believe around the world also the movement has grown and it's quite successful. There's a lot of awareness and a lot of men come forward and men share their story during Movember, share their, um, their experiences relating to the different areas of Movember. So it came about from men and it's also become very much entrenched in our, you know, in our yearly calendar. To then set aside this month and focus on what we need and how can we assist to them as a society. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that this is something that started uh, by the men, you know, by men, for men, uh, because they realized that they needed help as well and not um, hearing from the women telling them, hey, you need help. But they realized mm-hmm. that, look, need help and we need to do something about it and best we help each other even if it's just um highlighting it on um uh, in a month like november and make it november at least you know that there's a step in the right direction because because how common is uh, a mental health in men 
It's highly prevalent. Um, it's estimated that one in four men will experience some form of mental health a, a difficulty. Um, they possibly will attempt suicide. Our suicide rates amongst men are very, very high. And it's driven by poor mental health, poor social support. So the, the impact of poor mental health and the lack of support it's, seen, it's felt by all of society. So we recognize that men's mental health is not just a problem for men alone. It's also for us as women um, because women are also directly impacted by this. So we often find men who are sick, struggling with their mental, with mental health, any, any area of mental health, either be a, an actual disorder or just basic coping skills, overcoming different life challenges, um, relating to the relationships, possibly conflict resolution, their own internal wellness, um, things like depression, anxiety, anything relating to that. When, it impacts, when a man is impacted by this, the women around him are also impacted. So in essence, when one man is impacted by something, the community is impacted by this, his difficulty and his struggle as well. So we know that if we can reach out to support this man, the knock-on effect then is going to also impact on the people around him, the men and women around him, the children around him also. So it's really in everyone's best interest to not exclude people from any form of reaching out, any form of support, especially for men. Um, and, you know, when you highlighted men reaching out to men also, it's quite powerful when um, a man reaches out and speaks about his experience other men can be relate to. So we find also in November that you find your more, um, you know, certain celebrities or people who are widely admired in the communities, they've also spoken out about their experiences. Um, November is also a time for men to speak out about types of abuse they experience because oftentimes with GBV, the focus is on women um, because mm. women are the, the greater population that experience abuse. But we have to also highlight that men are also they can experience abuse as well. They, uh, men do um, experience rape. Men do experience emotional abuse. Men do experience other physical types of abuse as well. So November also we want to highlight this. And then for anyone going through some form of abuse, it will impact on their mental health. So so much is connected. And when we highlight that, and when men reach out to each other and show also that um, you know, men who hold a certain positions or are widely admired, when they show also, that they have gone through a certain experience, then um, other men can kind of relate to that. They may feel a bit more um, empowered to speak about the experience or to reach out for help around that. Mm -hmm. Now, how does society contribute to um, men being reluctant to talk about their mental health or to go out and seek support? I'm glad you asked that because the, our roles in society and our, the, the, the responses we get from society is so very impressionable on us, just in general also. Let's now go specifically to men. Um, you know, if we look at our boy child, let's start from the beginning, our boy child. Most often, boy child is socialized into being a certain way. Um, the boy child is expected to be stronger than um, other children. Is expected to not cry, so boys don't cry, wipe your face, wipe your tears, I don't want to see you crying. We often have parents suppressing the children's vulnerability to express the emotions. Okay, so, and more so on a boy child than a girl child. We often have parents becoming very irritated when a boy is shown to be a bit more sensitive or when he experiences emotions a bit more strongly. And this boy then grows up increasing these emotions and also holding on to this, this idea that I'm a boy, as a boy, growing up to be a man, I cannot, experience, I cannot be a certain way, I cannot be a that way, I can't express certain vulnerabilities, um, I'm not supposed to be in touch with my emotions. Oftentimes, our boys, they, they grow up not being able to show love, not being able to receive love. Because they are taught to be tough. They are taught to have a very hard exterior. And they are taught to not show any form of vulnerability. And being able to show love and being able to experience love, it's regarded almost as a vulnerability. So oftentimes our boys then, they 
they are um, they suppress that. And as they grow older, then the stigmas around young men and their mental health it, it just it just gets perpetuated. So, um, for example, if you look at the students, when students are struggling and overwhelmed with the amount of work that they have and their final exams and the stresses relating to their studies, um, if a young man has a breakdown, it's often it's not regarded even as a breakdown. Um, if he's overwhelmed entirely, he may not reach out for the support he gets because often the people around him, they may unconsciously discriminate against this person. Okay, so when we talk about stigma, stigma refers to when we, we show a type of a disapproval or a discrimination relating to a certain factor. So if, we, if there's stigma relating to mental health, when a man shows that he's struggling with mental health, Oftentimes, the world around him, his own spouse, it can be his parents, it can be his friends around him, they may not verbally say that um, I disapprove of what you are going through right now, but they may show it somehow, either by excluding him or becoming more irritable or not being supportive. So there is that stigma that, that's very much there, a lot of negative attitudes around it. There's also a disregard for men who are struggling. Um, they may confide to a friend who may be telling them that, oh, you must just get over it or this is how you solve the problem. And then don't worry about the problem. So the experience is often minimized and this man is then expected to just bottle it up. Um, but of, unfortunately, when you repress and when you repress and when you carry on repressing, it then somehow will manifest itself. And this is usually through mental health struggles. And this is then where we find also men who have repressed a lot of the emotional, um, have repressed the emotional uh, ex- experiences, which may then manifest itself in anger management problems. It manifests itself possibly in um, violent relationships. So they may uh, perpetrate GBV. They may perpetrate abuse against their children, violence towards other people. They may just be generally aggressive, you know, um, your aggressive driving. People who are just general aggressive. There may be um, substance abuse, so someone who may be turned to uh, different narcotics or even alcohol. So we find all of that. They, they may also become suicidal, um, employment. They may struggle with employment. They struggle with the relationships because they are so disconnected from themselves. So as a society, the stigma that we hold and the, the, the message that we give to people um, we may think it's one message alone, but as I've just explained now, you can recognize the impact that it has. It's so much more broader than just one man and expecting him to live his life and force himself to be happy. Mm-hmm. Wow, and uh, we have a huge role as a society to play. We can either make the man in our lives, make the men in our communities, or we can break them by uh, what we do to them. Um, Shaheda, please stay on the line. Uh, We're going to take a quick break and we will continue there, so. At this time of trial and worry, the blessings of charity are the ideal means to avoid calamity and despair. The Al-Imdad Foundation gives you the opportunity to sponsor a share in a borehole in South Africa for just 1,000 Rand and provide what the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, called the best form of charity. Donate online at alimdad.com or call 0861-786-243 for more information. Looking to get your kick? Kiki's have now reopened on 235 Matthews Mayiba Road in Durban. Head on over for the Taste with Kick. We offer something scrumptious for everyone in the family. Wraps, chicken tikka, burgers, tender grills, mocktails, milk shakes, and so much more. Corporate and events catering available. Visit our social media pages for more info or call 031-209-0119. Kiki's, the Taste with Kick. Discover the Africa of your dreams and surround yourself with her spectacular beauty. Relax beneath her serene sunsets. 
and explore wildlife at its natural best. It's where the pride of Africa comes together. The Quantu Private Game Reserve. Get to know the big five or cruise on an elephant safari game drive. Interact with lion and tiger cubs and enjoy world-class halal cuisine while we pamper you during your five-star stay. Indulge in the true African experience. For reservations, Call now on 042-203-1400 or visit quantu.co.za. The Quantu Private Game Reserve, the place of gathering. From the townships of South Africa, the refugee camps in Syria or orphanages in Yemen, the eyes of the needy speak volumes with just one glare. We know what it's like to be at Ground Zero with food essentials, clothing and blankets, fresh water portal trucks, and even on-site navigators. We use every cent to better their tomorrow. Become part of our journey to bring relief to all. Go to www.ashafulaid.org or call us on 011-809-8181. Ashraful Aid, under the auspices of Maulana Suhail Wadi. <laughs> What makes Randery Jewelers the optimum place for your memorable gift? Is it our range of exclusive, high-end, luxurious jewellery? Or is it our master craftsmanship of all your bespoke jewellery needs? We believe it's because at Randery Jewelers, we know just how to make your special moments last forever. Whether it's for a wedding, anniversary, or just a simple gift to show your love, trust Randery Jewelers to make it special. www.randerijewelers.com Make your moments last forever. With Randery Jewelers, the family name you can trust. Rejuvenating media day by day. This is Salam Media. You are listening to the Good Morning Talk on Salam Media, and uh, today we are talking about uh, men's men's mental health. Uh, with the introduction of uh, Movember. It is the 10th of November, so Movember is in full swing already. Uh, and if you'd like some more information on that, you can just Google Movember. It's just like November, except with the letter M. All right, uh, Shuheda um, Adam from Islamic Caroline is our guest for today. And uh, before the break, we were talking about the impact that society has on uh, men's men's health, men's mental health health and their mental well-being, which makes them reluctant to uh, talk about it, uh, reluctant to go out and uh, seek help. And I also find that um, our our parents, our families have uh, a lot to uh, contribute to this as well. Um, and as Shuheda mentioned, you know, they'll tell younger children, younger male children that, no, you shouldn't cry because men don't cry. Real men don't cry. They say things like that. But in today's world, we're learning that real men do cry and it's okay to get in touch with your emotions and that doesn't make you less of a man. Uh, Shuheda Shukran for um, staying on the line. Now, what programs or support systems does Islamic Care Line offer for men? Um, alhamdulillah, let's carry on with this discussion. I'm sure it's a benefit to people out there. So look... Mm -hmm. This is the avenues that men can um, reach out for help. So just in general also, not, not even specifically to Islamic Kela, but just in general, men can reach out to even their GP. If they're experiencing anxiety, if they're worried about depression, um, they're just not okay. They can even reach out to their GP um, on a community level. What we find also is that a lot of our community leaders, they're becoming a lot more aware of the need to be accessible, the need to um, to reach out to men and to be supportive to men. So men can, what they can do is start building a relationship with the community leaders and then open up to them when they feel more um, comfortable and when they feel safe with them. Um, then specifically at Islamic Care Line, so what we have is individual counseling. Um, people can contact us even if so people who are not available to come into face-to-face -face services that work commitments, et cetera, they can't come through. They can reach out to individual counseling. And oftentimes, um, 
a lot of men, they, they don't really know what the idea of counseling is. So they, alhamdulillah, I find that they're willing to give it a shot. They're willing to learn more about it and then to see on a trial basis if it does suit them or if they're happy enough with it. And once they start the counseling and they get into it, um, then they are quite happy enough with it. Um, we found that a lot of men who have completed the counseling, they actually then, they tell us that they will recommend other people to go for it. They do, in, um, they do promote counseling services amongst the peers around them. So that itself um, is quite powerful because, like I said earlier, when um, people can relate to people who are sharing a struggle and the help methods that they use, they are more likely to seek it out also. So uh, for people who are experiencing any form of emotional difficulties, they're welcome to contact that counseling. What we also offer now is we are training um, students to, to in, in basic counseling skills so they may not necessarily be, um, they may not necessarily end up as counselors, but they have, they will be ha having some quality that will enable them to then support people around them. Um, and these are male students. So they will be able to support people who reach out to them. Um, and they can also then do referrals for counselling as well. So we're trying to empower people to reach out. Um, we also work with a lot of our ulama just in terms of empowering them relating to um, mental health, relating to issues of abuse, relating to medical counseling. We're trying to empower them also about the need for um, a more holistic approach, recognizing the need for more individual counseling and more empathic counseling. So we, we're trying to um, offer services on an individual level and on a community level. Um, if anyone is interested in any further services, we can arrange... Um, something tailor-made to the specific community or a specific group. So if there's a group of men together and they want to do something, even if they want to reach out to others, we can then train them um, in terms of how they can run a group for other young, let's say young boys or for men. Whatever they have in mind, we can then adapt something and we will be able to support them if they want to reach out and do, um, and do further services within their community. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, and I, I'm happy that you're getting the community leaders involved as well, because sometimes they are the first port of call. Uh, the men would go to their community leader first and say, you know, I'm going through such and such, or I'm experiencing this, and how do I uh, uh, get through it? How do I overcome it? Uh, many a times uh, the GP is uh, probably not even uh, uh, the first port the first person we think about, but the community leader will be that person. So alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're getting the, the community leaders involved and they also have to look at it, um, not, not always from an Islamic perspective and say that, uh, you know, you have a weak iman and blah, blah, blah. It, it, mm -hmm. it must not come down to that, to have a, one, mm -hmm. a person having weak iman just because they through some mental issue there is more to that than just um iman mm -hmm. so yeah uh alhamdulillah it's a great really initiative that down. islamic care line is yeah sorry mark i just want to say relating to the community leaders when we actually work with them and when we break down mental health they do recognize just how um islam does encompass mental health so it's not just a matter of iman only they recognize that islam covers things like wellness contentment relationships with other people, um, your own reflection, how Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was, um, he was a counselor. He allowed people to share, people came to him in their times of need and he offered them some form of comfort. He promoted a wellness also, he promoted health, a mental health amongst these, um, in, in, in the community that they were in at that time. They didn't call it that specific word, but it's very much a part of Islam um, to know yourself is to know your Lord also. So it encourages community leaders uh -huh. have been recognized just exactly what place mental health places with, what it holds within the being as well. So it's a great journey. And those who are, uh, who those who do go along with it, um, they can definitely see the benefits of it. So people are welcome to also contact us, community leaders out there, welcome to contact us. Um, and we can then fix something for them, even if it's just a one-on-one -on -one information session, uh, Islamic Healing will be able to assist with that. 
All right, uh, Shukran Shuhaid, and sh uh, please share the number once again. Okay, they can contact us on 011-373-8080 or 078-727-1334. All right, so shukran so much for your time, Shuhaida, and um, have a wonderful day. Have one, likewise. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shuhaida Adam, a social worker at Islamic Careline, taking us through uh, Movember, uh, what it's all about and um, how can men get support, how can men get help. And Islamic Careline does offer um, some of the services for the men. So don't feel uh, shy, go out there and uh, get the help that you need if it's if it's for you or if it's someone that you know. And um, you can also start with your GP if you're feeling um, a little bit of uh, anxiety or depression or um, any anything else that you you know you know yourself better than anyone else and you know that you don't feel fine, then start there. Start with your GP, go out to your GP and get some help and um, you can also consult Islamic Caroline for further assistance. It is 12.30. You are listening to the Mid-Morning Talk on Salam Media. We will be right back. <laughs>